Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on EMC consideration. Our topic for discussion for today is near field and far field concept. We have discussed extensively on near field, which is either electric or magnetic field coupling. So far, we have not talked much about far field radiation. So the next few video, we are going to describe what is far field radiation. This will be the part 16 series discussion on EMC. The earlier on series discussion on EMC, I have put the video link under the description. So please go through the video if you are keen to know more about EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Thank you so much, guys. Okay, this is the diagram that I've shared with you earlier on. On the x-axis is the distance of observant from the noise source. On the y-axis is the wave impedance. If you still remember, we can consider there is an imaginary line here. Anything on the left, we call it near field. Anything that is on the right, we call it a far field. In between near field and far field, we have this transition region here. So this region is to transit slowly from near field to far field. In the near field, it's either dominated by E field or dominated by H field. Okay, so before I continue, I'd like to describe this wave impedance. Okay, wave impedance, which is R or Z, which stands for impedance, to calculate this formula is actually equals to B over I. Okay, so this is a simple Ohm's law. Okay, so when E field dominate, which means that voltage dominate. So when voltage dominate, we know that B will be a very big number. So therefore, the Z will be a big number. So for E field dominate, the wave impedance is actually high. You can see here, when H field dominate, the I will be a huge number as compared to the E. So when I actually become a huge number, the Z become a small number. So therefore, for H field dominate, the wave impedance is very small. And finally, if you look at the far field, Okay, the far field wave impedance is a constant number of 377 ohm. So this is the characteristic impedance of air, which I will explain to you later on. Okay, the ratio of the electric field to the magnetic field is called the wave impedance, which I have shown to you here. The Z here is called wave impedance. It's actually equals to E over I, which is mentioned over here. Okay, if the source has low current and high voltage, okay, which means that E over H is bigger than 377 ohm, okay, the near field is predominant electric. Okay, if the source has high current and low voltage, okay, which means that the wave impedance is less than 377 ohm, the near field is predominant magnetic. Okay, in the far field, this ratio E over H is equal to the characteristic impedance of the medium, okay, which is 377 ohm. Okay, all this I have described to you earlier on, but I just want to put into words so that you can understand. Okay, for a predominant electric field, okay, such as a straight line, okay, remember when there is a straight line, okay, which is an antenna, okay, they actually dominate by electric field. Okay, hence, the wave impedance near the antenna is very high. Okay, as the distance from the source increase, okay, the electric field antenna at a rate of 1 over d cubed. Okay, so d is the distance from observant, okay, which is over here. Okay, and the magnetic field antenna at a rate of 1 over d squared. Okay, I'll come to this later on, no worry. The wave impedance therefore decrease. 
Okay, so this is how we actually decrease the wave impedance. Remember, we need the wave impedance to finally meet at 377 ohm. So we need to ensure that the wave impedance actually decrease. Okay, so this is what it means over here. Okay, for a predominant magnetic field, okay, such as a loop antenna, okay, the wave impedance near the antenna is low. Okay, as the distance from the source increases, the magnetic field antenna at the rate of 1 over d cubed and the electric field antenna at the rate of 1 over d squared. Okay, the wave impedance therefore increases. Okay, so this is what you mean here. So we need to increase the wave impedance so that finally at far field, they will be at 377 ohm. So what does all this mean? Okay, so this is the diagram that I explained to you. Okay, so this is a loop antenna. Okay, if you still remember under loop antenna, which is by this part here, it's actually dominated by magnetic field. Okay, so you can see from here, the magnitude of the magnetic field is much bigger than the electric field. So we know that it's dominated by a magnetic field. So when this thing is dominated by a magnetic field, you can see that the magnetic field reduce 1 over d cubed. Okay, which means that they actually reduce faster as compared to the electric field. Okay, the electric field will reduce at 1 over d squared, while for the magnetic field will be reduced by 1 over d cubed. Okay, so because this is dominated by magnetic field, so the magnetic field need to die down much faster as compared to the electric field. So this is how we finally converge into a 377 ohm. Okay, so there are a few formulas here. So this formula allows us to calculate what is the E value under the near field, what is the H value. Okay, over here you can also calculate, okay, for example, what is the E field after far field radiation, what is the H field after far field radiation or so. So this is some of the parameters that if you are keen, you can do some calculation to determine how strong is your E field, for example, for this case here. Okay, this is a loop antenna. As mentioned, this is actually dominated by magnetic field. So the magnetic field has a higher amplitude, okay, but the signal also decay faster as compared to the electric field. So sometimes we need to do some calculation to obtain the H field or the E field. Okay, after the far field, the formula change completely, which is E field here and H field here. Okay, so I have also done for electric field. Okay, so this is dominated by electric field. So once it's dominated by electric field, the H will fall off at a slower rate, while the E will fall off at a larger rate. And then if you really need to calculate the H and E value under the near field, and under the far field, you can actually obtain the numbers. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much, guys.